This is pretty much all the information we have, isn't it? Yeah. So um, if you haven't, I'd suggest you to construct the question if you um, are looking at it and also puzzling over it. Because um, constructing the question is what you, is your first step in working out what are the, um, what are the important features that I can use here. Now, we're required to show that the red and the blue angles are the same. And so um, it's only one mark which suggests to us, okay, this should pop out quite easily. Now, Nadir, your first instinct was to talk about them being on the same arc. Now, excuse me. The reason why, um, the reason why this is tricky, oh yeah, okay, I see. Yeah, I see what we should do, I think. The reason why this is tricky is because the way it's been formed at the moment, because I think they even name this red angle, they name it ECB, don't they? Yeah. Yep, okay. Uh, or, Oh, okay, so they go all the way. Yep, sure, all right. Um, when you think about, say, the red angle, right, you can think about it being formed in a lot of different ways. So, for example, see um, ECB. Angle ECB is a bit weird because it's not even, in theory, it's not even a cyclic angle because you can see E is not on the circumference of a circle, right? I'm calling it DCB is just as unhelpful because D is not even in the same circle as C and B, so that's not, not very good. So what I would suggest is probably most useful is actually, uh, and I don't know if this is worth reading because I, you, don't, you know how dangerous it is when you start adding lines everywhere, it just gets confusing. I think it would be helpful to add AB. So I'm just going to um, uh, put it in like so. Okay. Now, because AB is a common chord, right? It's a common chord. So it's a common chord, <coughs> excuse me, in two circles that are the same size, okay? Now we know, I'm just gonna draw a little side diagram over here, maybe you wanna do the same. If we have a chord that's the same, a pair of chords that's the same length. So, for example, let's call this guy A, B, and call this guy C, D, okay? We can infer that here, the angles they form at the circumference uh, in the same segment are going to be equal. So you can see, uh, if you have a look at this angle here, uh, let's call this uh, x. So this angle over here is going to have to be the same as this angle over here. Let's call this y. Okay? If we really know that a, b, and c, d are the same, because if you picture it, Imagine me sliding CD over. So I'm gonna take CD, remember it's the same length as AB. So if I slide it over, it will sit directly on top of AB, right? If that's the case, then this is a very familiar situation. Uh, we're going to have uh, this. Remember we slid C and D, uh, so it was up here, right? So now we've got uh, C, Y, D, and those are angles standing on the same arc. So we know that that's the same. But the, the tricky thing is that you just have to make sure they're on the same side because there's two angles that are subtended, excuse me, by these arcs on the circumference. There's this one over here, and that's not equal, okay? So this is what we know within a circle, that if you have these equal chords, so long as you go in the same direction to like the, the big side or the little side, you get equal angles there. Now the thing is, with um, this circle and this circle, they aren't within the same circle, but they're circles of the same size, right? So therefore, the way that I would word this is I would say, okay, um, I could, as it were, I could move this circle and this circle together. They would be the same circle because they're, they're congruent, right? And they would both have this, it, it would actually be angles standing on the same uh, arc, AB. It's just that um, they happen to be separated out even though they're they're the same size, okay? So I guess I would actually say, my reasoning would be, um, since the circles have equal radii, the circles are congruent. One of the nice things about um, circles is that unlike triangles, you wanna prove triangles are congruent, you need all this information, right? Um, but circles only have a single piece of information that makes them what they are. So if you have the re equal radii, then the circles are congruent. Therefore, um, they both angles, angle A, C, B, and angle, what do we call it? Uh, a, D, B, A, D, B, are equivalent to, 
Because they're both standing on this arc AB, they're just like angles standing on the same arc, right? For a single mark, that's all I would expect. Um, I could be a little more, um, I could make a much longer rigorous proof, um, but it would certainly be like it'd be four or five lines. And for one mark, and they say, what's the actual wording of the question? Um, Yeah, do you notice they don't say proof? Yeah. They don't say proof. So it's like, look, we just want you to get at the idea that they are the same and we don't need a whole um, formal structured thing to prove that. Okay, so at least now we know the idea. Um, it is about this property. Okay, so now I can say these angles here, they really are equal. Okay, so now what we're setting out to prove is that um, this EB here is perpendicular. Is that correct? Okay, so before I sort of launch any further into it, what do you guys think? What do you see? If I want to show that this is perpendicular to that, where do we want to go? What jumps out at you, if anything? Okay, which triangles are you thinking of? What are their names? CEB's over here, and EDB's over there. I think that's a great idea. If, excuse me, if, um, the question is correct, then these two are going to be 90 degrees, right? Now, if they're 90 degrees, have a look at these two triangles. You actually know a whole lot about them now, right? If they're really 90, they've got these sides the same, they've got a common side, they've got these angles as well, so we've already got, like, you've got lots of information. These triangles should be, uh, should they be congruent? What do you think? They should be congruent, right? Because if it's really true, then you've got side, angle, side, side, angle, side. Now, I don't know that to be true yet, but if I can prove that they're congruent, then these angles will be equal. Their angles on, um, what's it called? Uh, their angles on a straight line, so they add it to 180 degrees, so therefore, I'm home. So can I prove that these triangles are congruent? Do I have enough information? Okay, now remember, we just proved that these angles, uh, or we just got to the fact that, I mean, we wouldn't prove it, uh, we got to the fact that these angles are equal. We've already got this side and this side, that's by definition. And then we've got this side, what would you ask me to do? Aha, very good. So there's not just, um, there's not just these two triangles here, but there's the big triangle that they're a part of, triangle, uh, B, C, D. So we do need to prove this, okay? So let's, let's do this, right? I would actually say in triangle B, C, D. Oh, yeah, right? I wasn't sure. So when you're proving something, do you yep. see the whole thing? Like, would you do B, C, D? Like, do you have to, um, when they give you um, quadrilaterals, do yep. you have to, if you're proving two triangles in it, do you yep. still have to write the whole shape? And then... uh, so I always, as a general, um, principle, uh, I always try to name the features that I'm talking about. If, for example, I'm talking about alternate angles on parallel lines, I like to name what the lines are. Um, is that required? In most cases, it's not. For instance, in a question with parallel lines, there's, usually, there's often only two parallel lines. So it's like, which other parallel lines could I be talking about? Right. However, um, talking about parallel lines, say, it's just as often that there isn't a single pair. Maybe it's a parallelogram or a square or a rectangle, and you've got, you've got a pair of pairs. Um, in the case of talking about triangles here and triangle sums, there are clearly multiple triangles in this situation and I think it helps us to refer to which one's which. Not just to communicate to the market but also so we don't get confused. Okay? So this is the way I would say it. I don't even need to prove that these things are isosceles. For all I know, um, they could be equilateral. I mean, they're not because eventually I'm going to prove these are 90, but I don't know that yet. So I'm not even going to talk about the word isosceles. I think there's a nicer, easier way to state this wording. I'd say in that big triangle, I can go straight to saying that BC equals BD. And here's my reason. Equal sides, that's these guys, equal sides are opposite. Equal angles. This is just exactly what I was talking about uh, one line previously when, I sh when we were talking about why these two angles here are equal, right? Well, those are equal angles, and in a triangle, if you've got equal angles, they must, they create equal sides, okay? So I've got BC and BD, this and this. 
So now I'm pretty much there to prove that these are congruent because now I have side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. So I would say now uh, in triangle, and I, I, I change gears, right? In fact, this is why a congruence proof actually has the names of the triangles in it so that you um, illustrate what you're talking about. B, C, E, and triangle B, D, E. Okay, so I'm just gonna... What have got, we got here? Um, I can talk about these two sides that I just referred to, and I would say proven above. BC equals BD, proven above. Um, for the same reason, namely that we looked at it in the earlier question, I've got these angles, BCE and B. D, e. So whenever you've got um, two things that are for the same reason, which is proven above in this case, um, you can just say similarly, you don't have to restate the property. Uh, and then lastly, I would say CE equals DE, because um, in the question, now just be careful, a lot of people here would say given, they'd say given. I believe if you have a look at the question, the question doesn't say this like this actual set of symbols, it says that E is the midpoint, right? So what you would say is, this is because E is the midpoint. That's the reason. Um, people tend to, and I was actually just talking to some years about this last week, on Friday, I think. People misuse the word given all the time. So for example, if you get told a shape is a square, right? And then in a, in a proof, you want to say, oh, these two sides are equal. That, that wasn't given to you. It was given that they were a square, and that you used your understanding of the geometric properties to then talk about some features. So don't say given. I almost never say given um, unless the, the actual words are written in the question. So therefore, these two triangles we were looking at are congruent. What was the reason again? Um, what was the, um, the congruence proof test that we used? Side, angle. angle side, it's included, right? S, A, S. Now from this point, I think you can kind of leap off. I would then say that angle B, E, C equals angle B, E, D because corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal. And then you go ahead and do the angle sum of the straight line and you're done. Okay, does that make sense?